Now then, here we are at the beautiful Malham Cove on a fantastic sunny day. Here we are with Blue, and we've got a special guest today just lurking in the background. We have Chris from MCM Outdoors. Hello. And if you haven't checked out his channel yet, you need to go have a look at that. He always gives a load of good solid information on wild camping and getting out in the great outdoors, which he always says. <laughs> anyway, today we are gonna head up onto the top of Malham Cove uh, probably get the drones out and have a play with that just to show you how stunning it is in the Yorkshire Dales here and then uh, we are camping out hidden away to find a little nook somewhere that's uh, not gonna be seen by anybody and then um, have a couple of beers with this uh, guy who is the influence on the beers for me because uh, generally I only have one or two but uh, I'm sure that he'll be uh, making me drink a few extra but anyway we'll get on up there and we'll show you how beautiful it is What a place, eh? So we are going to now head up onto the top of this and just show you the limestone pavement on top, which is another beautiful sight to see. Magic, eh? Just magic. Right mate, you ready for this? This is literally the steps of doom, Andy Wardle style. Lovely. <laughs> Pendle Hill on steroids. It is, yeah. It doesn't last too long, but <laughs> it's a tough one, is this? Look, he's laughing at us. <laughs> yeah, <we're going> <laughs> Well, here we are on top of the limestone pavement, top of Malham Cove. Chris is just doing some magic manoeuvre with his drone here. He's going to attempt to catch it. Let's, uh... oh, look at that. Mad skills, eh? After I just uh, crashed mine into that tree and then into that wall and uh, damaged all my rotors. So that might, might, might be mine out for the rest of this camp. But uh, anyway, we've got a little bit of footage, which is good. and. Um... We are now gonna just uh, chill out for a bit and then move on to greener pastures to find a place just to pitch a couple of beautiful tents. Um, Chris today has got the Scarp One, which is a new tent to him. So I'm quite excited about seeing that one because I've not seen one up close. And uh, I've got the Abisco Light Two, which is doing me proud currently, quite happy with that tent. But um, yeah, luckily he's, uh, Saved his drone from destruction. <laughs> Mine has taken a lal tumble, eh? But shit happens, it's just when things you just gotta not worry about it and just uh, keep the calm, that's the main thing, anyway. So we're just making our way off the uh, limestone pavement. I'm gonna find somewhere grassy just to uh, pitch these tents. But yeah, it's just fantastic up here. Absolutely incredible, stunning place to be. I've just got this hazy sunshine just beaming down on us. Just warming our faces enough, but I'll tell you what, there's a bit of a mist coming through and it's just, it's just 
dropping and really cold all of a sudden. I don't know if I can show you, but you can actually see it rolling down. Let's get close to this edge. <laughs> ah, it's a bit scary here. But if you look here, just this mist just dropping through down the valley. But I mean, look at that. Whoa, nearly fell. <laughs> Gotta watch where you put your feet. Just stunning. Just cannot beat that, can you? Beautiful. Right, Blue, climb. Don't, don't record me saying that, she's fit. <laughs> I've just recorded it, mate, that's it. Oh, she is fit. It's going in. Well, here we go, we have found a beautiful place just to pitch our tents well out of the way. And it's just time to get these backpacks off. They are heavy. Too much beer for me, I can't really carry all this. And I've not drunk anything water-wise, so this is going to be interesting. I need to get some food in me before I start drinking with this beer monster. So anyway, it's a bit of a grass here that's actually not too bad at all. And if we just spin around this way, we can just see the view's been sort of swallowed up by this mist that's just pouring its way down this canyon section which uh, we might get to show you tomorrow depending on which way we walk around um, but we are going to go to Gordale Scar as well which Chris hasn't seen before and he's just going to be blown away by that ah anyway let's get this uh, tent up So there we are pitched up. I've got my Felraven Abisco Light 2 tent, which is just a beautiful tent. I really do like it. Standing proud there. And then next to that we have Chris in the uh, Scarp 1, which I've never seen before. And it looks like some of Star Wars. But um, it's a clever bit of kit really, because you can do a lot of different things with it so we've got this uh, exoskeleton here which you don't have to put on but in high winds obviously it just adds to it there's guy lines all over the thing as you can see but it does stand stands well there mate I do like it it's all right what's your first opinions on it good looking tent load of room in it nice and light a um, little bit more involved to pitch than your average sort of single pole tent but looks promising so far I'm looking forward to it Thank you the campsite <laughs> That's pretty quiet though to be fair that yeah, It's not too bad Yeah it's good What are you blowing up like a little canoe? Yeah <laughs> Bright yellow one Going in the pool with this later <laughs> Look at this It's grand just grand. Anyway, I thought I'll show you what our camping kit is for this evening. So coming into my tent first, I've got this uh, Thermarest Adara HD, which is like a winter sleeping bag, but 
It's a women's that, it's just a long version and it's long enough for me. Seat Summit pillow, and that just sits in the head of that there. And I've got the Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm sleeping mat. It's a bit of overkill for tonight because we'll probably get down to freezing definitely tonight, but um, the, I mean that thing really, it's for proper winter camping. Um, I could probably get away with just using the uh, Neo Air Uber Light tonight. But Blue's mat is set up down there. He's got the mat I made in, which has got the reflective layers in, and then this one underneath as well, which is a German army mat. But quite simple though, my setup there. Loads of space in this tent though. I've got my food down here, a few beers. And what's this? A bit of broccoli. Got all your broccoli, don't you? That keeps you fit and healthy keeps your brain sparked and then if I take you around now to Chris's tent yeah. just unzip this and we'll have a look in here it's generally the same sort of setup you use for camping let's have a sit in this tent now this tent is nice it's got a nice feel about it definitely especially with this sort of sun making this hue of light come through. So Chris has got two pillows, would you believe? He's got this Mammut one, which he's testing, um, which is uh, new to him, which is uh, just a tiny little one. And he's gonna put that on top of this one, which is a Trekology pillow, I think. We've got the Nordisk um, sleeping bag here, which is a synthetic sleeping bag, but feels really nice. And it is on top of, if I can show you, the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. So this is sort of in between the Uber Light and the X Therm, which I've got in there. Um, but that's perfect for conditions like this. Absolutely spot on. But yeah, simple setup. It's got a trekker chair down, down there, which uh, I haven't brought with me, but um, it's a brilliant piece of kit. Oh. I'm gonna get out and take in just this, look at it. Look at this. Literally on top of the world. What's this? What is it? Ready? Blue, stand, ready. Fetch it. Fetch it, come on. Good boy. Here then, drop. Fetch it here. Fetch it here. Drop. Good boy. Oh, Good slavery thing. Right, we're just going to get out and uh, yeah. sit in the sunshine and have a beer. So, I'm putting my warm gear on. Straight on with my down cellar pets. And my down jacket. Ready to taste some beer in this fine country that we live in. What a landscape. Well, <laughs> dog, I've got a surprise for you. Get down. So firstly, I've got a treat for the dog. This is some... Uh, Lamb ribs. You ready, Blue? Look at this. There you go, Blue. <laughs> Got you on that one. And if he's happy, and me and Chris now can have a beer and chill out. And we're starting with... Feeling good. Chocolate and orange stout. Chocolate and orange, eh? Get this opened up. If you brought a cup, are you going out the can? Is that uncouth? Well, I don't know how these beer things go. It has been said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, hell. Mate. Hey? Right, I'm getting a cup then, mate. Here we go. Go and drink out the can on our special beer taster, mate. 
<laughs> right, take two. Don't be uncouth. We have. Oh, that's a right, it's, uh, Look at that. Treacle. Go for you, that. Cheers, mate. Cheers, man. Here we are, sat in the most stunning place to have a beer. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Just still and tranquil now, isn't it? Unreal. Ah. <sighs> so you've got to go for the aroma first. What are you getting, smell-wise? Uh, it's pretty orangey, pretty chocolatey. Chocolate orange. Exactly what, what it, says it says on, on the, the tin. tin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice drop, that, isn't it? Really nice. I'll tell you what, it wouldn't really matter what we're drinking at the minute. Look at that. What a view. We can't see what we're, we're looking out to, but I'm sure I'm sure you'll spin the camera around in a bit and just, just rolling countryside, limestone pavement, banks of cloud drifting in and out. It's perfect. Just fantastic. Can't beat it, can you, mate? Really? This what, is what, what it's all about. This isn't it? is what it's all about. Exactly that. This is it. I'll tell you what. It's a difference for me as well. Coming on a camp like this with someone else. Yeah. You know, I'm always on my own, so it's just it's nice to have someone around, mate. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. It's nice to have a bit of company for and a change. And be with, yeah. Oh. Doesn't feel extreme enough, mate, for your videos. <laughs> We need a snowstorm. Yeah. 100 mile an hour winds. I've ordered like, it. Man, yeah, when's it coming? It's, it's coming in it morning, mate. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thing is, though, like, I love, um, I love all extreme stuff. It's, it definitely makes me feel like I'm alive doing all that, but you need these times as well, you know, just where you can. Nice bit of chill out. Just calm, you know, it just. It just refreshes the brain, doesn't it? Just yeah, I love it. Blue's loving that. Yeah, I'll have to film this. Look at this dog. <laughs> Set of ribs. <laughs> Up bones, the whole lot just eats everything. There'll be nothing left of it. That nice blue. He just wants to swallow the whole thing. <laughs> He'll, no, he will eat the lot. There'll be no left. I'll um, I'll give him like dead rabbits and pheasants. So I'll just like split the back open on a pheasant, so it's not just feathers straight away. Yeah. And um, I'll, honestly, I'll get back and there'll be just a bag left. He's eaten the whole lot. Hot bones, everything. He sometimes leaves the feet. Yeah. You know the clawy type bits and what have you. Um, but honestly, he eats the lot. Unbelievable. Right. While we're here chilling out having this beer. I asked on Instagram just to um, put some questions forward for me and Chris today while we're out on this camp. So I'm going to fire a couple off, or we'll both answer, and um, yeah, you've got a couple of questions too, have you, mate? Yeah, people have sent me a few as well, so you want to go first, mate, and then, yeah, we'll go from that. Oh, well, here's one straight away then. From the Geordie Wild Camper, Solo... Or a Bisco Light 2. We've got the Bisco Light 2 here. He's got a solo. Fight to the death. What are you thinking? Um, it's a tough one. Both strong tents. Um, but I'm going to say the solo would win. <laughs> I'm going to be controversial. I think it would win just because of the pole structure. Just because it's sort of semi geodesic. And uh, the Abisco Light is um, a tunnel, tunnel. tent. Yeah. So, although that is spectacularly strong, especially when it's double poled, I think that I'd have to see some horrific conditions really to, well, to sort of see it fail. Really. I will say that in my Storm Arwen video, um, I tested the Abisco Light One to death with that, and um, it still stood up strong. It was still going, you know, absolutely brilliant tent, and I think a solo in that would have it had folded in two. I think it's too high. For extreme conditions, extreme winds, so I'm saying I'm going to go with Phil Revan for that one. Yeah, I think their tents would be uh, stronger than that that common solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
Right. Oh dear. Next. I've got here bucket list hike question mark and that's from Branston W. I'll go first on that one. We've just chatted about this. Yeah, Everest Base Camp Trek or the Annapurna Circuit in the Himalayas without shadow of a doubt. Um, fantastic peaks, you know, reading about the Himalaya in books since I was a kid. Only ever seen it in films and on the internet and I'd love to go and look at it with my own eyes. So Base Camp Trek or Annapurna Circuit. I'd go at Base Camp. I'd love to do that, but I'd like to, yeah, it's one thing trekking it, but I'd like to run it. Because I think it's like nine days trek, but if you ran it, I could probably do it in half the time. I know it'd be a lot harder on your lungs and everything, but I'd enjoy that. And then from base camp, just maybe tootle about, do a couple of little uh, island, out and backs. Island peak, it, you it, can do, can't you? Yeah, it'd be awesome, absolutely awesome. So yeah, question, or are you going to be too slow here? No, I've He's got there. one. He's there. Someone's asked me, um, Chevy 13, how have you trained Blue so well? Oh, I'll tell you what, he's a good dog like, isn't he? Yeah. Here, Blue, come here. So commands, you need to make sure that you're using the same command every time. And you need to make sure that everyone in the family and friends all uses the same command and make sure it abides by it. Right, lie down. Good boy. Die. Good boy. There you go. So you just need to make sure that, you know, you're all sticking by it and then it doesn't become diluted. That's what I'd say. And you've got to put the time in. If you don't put the time in, dogs are hard work. They are really hard work. And this dog, because I've put the time in, and my dad as well, I never have to give him a command really, do I? No. You know, we're out on a walk and he's just no bother whatsoever. I don't have to say anything. So yes, just put the time in, that's all. Hey, Blue. Next one from Benedict Davies. Which tent would you recommend? Doesn't say any more than that, so would I recommend? generic, I think. I mean, if I had choice of one tent, I think I'd go with that Abisko Light 1, purely because it has taken a hammer in and it, it stands up strong. Yeah. It's lightweight, it packs so small, and I just think as an all-round one-person tent, I don't really think you can beat it. Yeah. I think that, I mean, it depends. It's it's a tough question, is it? Because it depends on your budget, what you conditions. intend to use it for, what conditions. Absolutely. You know, you can spend as little or as much as you want, really, on tents. Um, so there's loads of good tents out there. And you probably make a whole video on tents. <laughs> the different yeah. conditions. It's, something, it's probably a good subject for a live stream where you can have a bit more you know drill down into some specific details and stuff like that but there's loads out there next one scraggy 71 do you always camp light or do you sometimes take everything but the kitchen sink <laughs> see <laughs> what I, we're on, I generally like camp pretty light but sometimes i do have a full bag which is when it gets above 15 kilos i think that's when you're pushing it weight wise um generally i aim for like 12 kilos at most but him. <laughs> yeah. You uh what you have to ball. Oh. Me glove. Blue, blue's brought this. Ready blue? Fetch it. But yeah, Chris, um he takes the kitchen sink, you know, he's on two or three pillows. Yeah. yeah. Don't scrimp. <laughs> you you do put some weight in, definitely. I think yours is about sixteen today and mine's similar with the drones and the yeah. filming gear and Carrying my water, that's that's a big thing. I need to start filtering water, but if we were there's no water source here, is then we could have got a bit on the way up, but then you're still carrying the weight. Yeah. If you camp near a decent water source, you can save yourself a bit of weight there. So Definitely. Well yeah. I'll, I, I'll never be a true lightweight camper. I like it. I like to do a bit of the fast packing, you know, running yeah. with it. So yeah. Um we have a question from Steve Hallis 17. Do you watch any other wild camping YouTube channels? Oh, oh, that's a question, is that? Like, I don't know. Controversial, that, mate. I mean, I've got to say, I'm new to YouTube, so, like, I've pretty much... I watch a few. I can't really say more than... Definitely no more than ten. Five or six is probably what I watch. Um, and this guy is one of the first that I started watching. I started making videos and I thought I best work out how to do this so I started watching a few other people 
Um, but yeah, I mean, your channel's always just solid, decent content. I always like that. Um, who else? Uh, step away from the screens. He's just a, he's a funny fella, isn't he? I like him. Um, Solo Summertier. Yeah. He's just, he's quite similar to me. Pushes it a little bit. You know, I like to do the adventure more Dave, than yeah. the kit. Yeah. Um, what about you? Yeah, I don't, I don't watch tons. Um, just because you run out, you don't have the time, do you? Especially if you're out filming your own content and then replying to your own comments and stuff like that. So it is quite hard, really. And there's loads of fantastic channels out there. Um, obviously, Al's big fan of that, especially his extreme latest camps. Really entertaining watches uh, when you're nice and warm, just seeing some of the things that you put yourself through. That's always good. Um, got a couple of mates that I watch. Um, Obviously, my mate Ant from Survive the Night and Tony Noble, I, I, I like theirs. Uh, we get out and do quite a bit. But um, yeah, as you say, Solo Summertier. Um, stripy Hat Guy, he's a guy in Scotland, Glencoe. I've not he's got seen a scarf, him. a nice bloke, and he does some extreme sort of winter climbs up there. But yeah, there's loads out there, isn't there? Definitely, yeah, yeah. There's um, actually. Um, what, blue, go away. There's uh, another one which nobody not many people have sort of seen and that's um lucy orangina right so she's just started out she's um i can't remember what country she's from her english is it's not perfect which is quite endearing the way she talks about you know but you'll have to sort of check her channel out I will do. what she's about is just somebody who doesn't have a clue about how to go about these things but takes herself out on an adventure and not just small adventures she does she throws herself in at the deep end and works it out along the way she has got such a brilliant positive mindset yeah that it's just as i say it's endearing it's like it's such a it's a, such a positive way of living a life yeah and she she titles one of her starts of her videos and says something like um i took my depression for a walk like straight that. away i just yeah. thought Happy you know days. what an amazing woman you know yeah. she's just getting out there and just trying to good on it make a good life so yeah, yeah. On, on check that, her out yeah another sorry another one is um along the same lines um fun-sized earthling a little girl called mari she goes out and um, she has some epic adventures just on her own solo trips up to like um Torridon. She's bivied on the um, on the highest summits in Scotland. Um, she's done backpacking around Sky, but you know where a lot of people would be quite put off, quite daunting. Um, she just goes up and does it, and as I go, she's got real good attitude, yeah. and That's she has some about. fantastic adventures. So she's a nice girl, and she she gets up to some great adventures. Yeah, good stuff. Um, right, let's have a look then. Okay, Mick Straker. Straker. Um, is there anything you both don't own camping wise but see others using which then makes you want it? Any bit of kit you fancy? The scarf. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got it now. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so he's, he's Some of them, be, I want them kecks. He's bought them, yeah. Get a pair of down trousers, mate. This a pair of down about. trousers. Yeah, you'll be suffering in a minute yeah. and I'm gonna well, be. I'm getting a little bit cold, but I'll be yeah. alright. I'm just waiting for the snow to come in. I'm I'm ready for it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's one of those hobbies where you, you you walk around the Lake District and you go into the shops and you always see shiny new stuff that you always want. It's like the biggest market. It's quite most, a male thing, that. Yeah. Just see more shiny shiny gear. I know. Yeah. And then you need to move house because you've got that many things hanging up and you've got no <laughs> space for it yeah. and stuff. And what about you? I've got a shipping container to put it yeah. all in, so I'm quite You're happy. All right. Yeah, I've got the storage. Yeah. <laughs> um, kit wise, anything. Do you know what? I I honestly feel like I've... I mean, it's always tents, but I don't like most designs of tents because they're, they're expensive and they're never perfect. And I want to design my own tent that is going to be my perfect tent. And everyone's got different ideas and stuff. But yeah, I'd like to try another 20 or 30 tents out there, definitely. Yeah. Um, some of the smaller brands as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've got some pretty good kit. I don't really... Like I've got the best sleeping mat. I don't think you can upgrade from my sleeping mats I've got. Well, you don't need anything else. That's the thing. You don't. You don't need anything else. I don't need. No. But it's. I suppose if you're making videos, you've got to kind of 
turn things round, I suppose, from time to time and, you know, have new things to show people and, and make content about, really. Although it is actually about the actual, you know, the act of getting yeah. out and doing it, not the kit. Yeah. But some people like to see kit and, you know, learn about new things. And if you can help people out by using it and telling people whether it's worthwhile, you know, people are a little bit short of cash nowadays. Everyone's a little bit more strapped than they, they have been. So if you can save people wasting the hard earned cash, it's all good, isn't it? Yeah, if you can just show some bits and pin more pinpoint. Yeah. You cut out all the crap, cut off the dead wood, and get to the more pinpoint stuff. It's then a it definitely helps people. It? There's that much. There's that much choice out there. Oh god, yeah, yeah. So like, perfect example. So I've just bought. Um, I've got a few bivvies anyway, but I bought the um, North Face Assault bivvy. So as soon as I got it, I set it up, and it was just a nightmare. Don't like it at all and I wouldn't advise buying it and it's 225 quid you'd expect a bivy bag which is just a piece of material and a couple of poles to, of you know from a decent manufacturer to be top quality mm. the quality is there but the design's not and that's you know you don't know unless you try and I've spent that money and I think that will help influence people to Oi. go go <laughs> <laughs> no, get away nah, no the second time he's done that Oh dear me, you're attractive spray though. Some things on you are attractive. To stop it. Blue on mail. Yeah, that's All it. Right. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> stop. If you can see, he, want, he wants the look you, mate. He me. wants you. It's not happening. <laughs> I am single. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, oh, nightmare. Blue. It's all over. It's all over. I'm wrecking it. <laughs> so we'll carry on. Let's do a couple of questions. I'm trying to keep my gloves on because man it's cold oh, now isn't it absolutely it's just, yeah the sun's just dropped down behind the hill behind you now it's it's the and wind chill yeah just breeze coming through and there's mist so it's just a bit of moisture in the air ready blue just gotta keep the dog entertained right let's go in some questions then um so lisa wagster do you know her no uh, what time of year do you prefer to wild camp winter or uh, autumn autumn um, yeah number one the midges are gone good shout they can ruin a wild camp yeah and number two just a little bit cooler a little bit more comfortable and the colors for me autumn autumn colors. good shout I, i'm gonna say winter i just love snow i love getting out in it all and uh pushing myself to the extreme so winter for me um Old man and Avon, why have neither of you got a camper? Oh, why have you not got a camper van? Um, because I like camping in tents, not vehicles. I do like camper van. Well, my mate's got one. I'd, I'd like one, but uh, they're about fifty grand, so <laughs> that is Mon slightly money's prohibitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone wants to send us one, <coughs> that'd be great. You when know. when us. You mean you? Well, one each. One each, yeah? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Just keep it fair. No, that's know? fair enough. Um, I've not got a camper because probably money-wise, it's a lot to buy. Yeah. But I've always had a Land Rover Defender with a roof tent on. So I make my own sort of camper through that, which is, it's been awesome over the years, honestly. I've been all over in that thing. So yeah, um, I would happily get a camper though, definitely. Yeah. Uh, next question then, let's have a look. Uh, where's your favorite places to hike or camp? I'm just going to go to Lake District. Lake District. Yeah. I just every time you go, it's just love it. It's just epic, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and regardless of weather, it's just always it's just a fantastic place to go. So, uh, Islander Outdoors. He's got a YouTube channel, right? Um, Islander. Islander. Yeah, he does. I think it's all about sharks. All right. Um, I did watch. A, he does a couple of wild camps, and I watched a, <clears throat> one or two of his wild camp videos, and they're actually really good. Um, anyway, his question: Camera gear set up for wild camping. What do you use? Um, GoPro Hero Seven Black, DJI Pocket Two. Yeah. And uh, it's good bit drone. Of that. Yeah, DJI drone. Yeah, that's it for me. And a Canon EOS M50 with a couple of different lenses, nice wide angle, lets a load of light in. So yeah, and I, I just vary vary that camera setup depending on where I'm going, how hard the walk's going to be, 
and what kind of feel, vibe that I want the video to have. What about you, Al? I'm just on the GoPro now. My first <coughs> 25 to 30 videos are filmed entirely on my phone. I, I edited everything on my phone. Blue, it's gone behind you. Fetch it. Go on, get on. Get on. <laughs> I edited everything on my phone and did the whole lot on it. And it was, you could do it, but it's hard work. And obviously come winter, you can't uh, get your phone out in the wet. I noticed that because it shut off a couple of times. It's as well, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I bought a GoPro and I've, I generally do everything on the GoPro now and that's what you are watching us through now. Um, and yeah, it's fantastic, definitely. But I've had issues with it. It keeps shutting off and doing all sorts of weird stuff. So You're a bit buggy. Yeah, I don't know. It's the audio that I need. I need to buy that mic you've got. Something Relative. like that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, East Yorkshire... East Yorkshire Mammal. Do you know what a mammal is, mate? A mammal. A mammal. Something that gives birth. Ah, go away, Blue. <laughs> so you don't know what a mammal is then? No. Is this a Yorkshire term, mate? No, no, no. This is a, a cycling term. All right, I have no idea whatsoever. Okay, so a mammal is a middle-aged man in lycra. <laughs> Bloody hell. So it's, um, yeah, anyone who's into cycling. <laughs> right. I, I'm a mammal. Oh, that's, right, that's okay. Me. I go out cycling quite a bit, so. Oh, yeah. Anyways, question is, uh, top three tips for someone new to wild camping. Go on, give us a tip. Number one, don't overthink it. Just get out there and do it. Number two, don't think you've got to spend the earth on kit. Go ahead, Luke. And number three... Have you been revising? No. Like, how do you come out with these straight away? Don't, don't be too ambitious at first. Go somewhere a little bit closer and see how you get on. But number one, just go and do it there you go then well i sort of totally agree with that really my top tip is what i always say to people is because there's always that level of anxiety of yeah. getting out and camping and you know knowing what it's all about and i would say camp in your garden work it out how things work your kit yeah. make sure it all feels comfortable and you're happy with it all before you risk going out somewhere more wild that's all so um yeah have you been revising? No. Have you read these questions? I'm, I'm, I'm just good, mate. <laughs> Can't help it. Um, right, let's have a look. For the mist. Luke McGowan. No, no, no. Most memorable wild camp for you. You go first. And that'll give me a bit of thinking time. Okay, mem most memorable wild camp. Well, I've got to say Storm Owen, um, yeah. probably. Purely because memories are formed mainly when you have usually it's extreme emotion you know childhood trauma and all that i don't know <laughs> but um you know happy feelings and all that and that was just such a fantastic night out for me i absolutely loved every second of it so i'm going to say that but i'm going to also say um when i was camping on the isle of sky at the age of 15 with my mate ben he's a sound lad um I just remember waking up in the morning um, in this crappy little dorm tent, you know, like back in the day that were just, the <laughs> poles were made out of like balsa wood. Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> woke up and the, the tent was laid against us because the wind was blowing that hard. It was as strong as Storm Owen, honestly. And it was just laid flat against us. And um, he never even, he didn't wake up or anything. Just slept through it all. And I was like, what the hell's going on? That was a crazy night. So yeah. Yeah, for me, probably it was uh Pre, pre days of YouTube up in Scotland with a uh, bunch of guys that we used to go climbing with called the Liverpool Climbing Club and it was up uh, around Kintail, Five Sisters of Kintail, we camped out there and yeah it was unbelievable, winter camp in Scotland, superb, great great scenery, great ridge, the Kintail Ridge there. That's the thing like there's so many places in the UK just get out and it makes it memorable doesn't it just because yeah. of the scenery so yeah um jdr 93 uh, what do you do to get yourself hyped up to get out there again after a bad night have you had any bad nights i've had i've had more and less enjoyable camps um but never truly bad and if i had a bad one uh, it wouldn't stop me getting out again I think one of the most important things to do is say you have a you do have a bad experience it's just to go out and 
face it again, learn from what went wrong. Could you do anything differently? And then get back out, learn from it. You know, it's all experience. Um, experience in wild camping is ultimately knowledge gained and just get back out and do it again. So I'm Go. totally in agreement with that. So like my mindset is even the negative things that happen to me in life, I see the positive in those. So it doesn't matter what happens, you know, you get cheated on, your heart's broken, um, you, I don't know, injure yourself, somebody in your family has problems, issues, whatever, you know, everything I sort of take and deal with and turn it into a positive and a learning experience, like yeah. you're saying. So anything to do with camping, I cannot say I've had a bad camp. I love it. I look even if it failed, I've not actually really failed a camp yet, but yeah, I you, love it. Your ten breaks, fix it, get it repaired, get back out again the week after. Exactly that. Yeah, get so I don't, I don't feel I need to hype myself up again. No. I'm just I just <laughs> what I do is I jump on every opportunity I can to get out there and actually camp. Yeah. Um you know, if you've got a night where you're just thinking, oh, great, I can relax at home and do nothing, I don't think that. I think, F it, I'm, I'm about. Out. Let's yeah. go out camping, why not? Yeah. You know, make the memories, so. Yeah, um, right, let's have a look, see if there's anything else. I'm gonna get me warmer gloves in a minute. I know, it's cold, like. <laughs> I'm getting my warmer gloves. Um, I think we've done all these, to be fair. Uh, do you, do either of you have any Scottish or Welsh summit camp ambitions? Which summits appeal to you? That's from Alan Young, 214. I have got one. Um, Sullivan. I want to go up there to um, and do that. It just looks iconic. Just the sort of profile. Have you seen it in Lockerson? It's got this really steep profile, really remote. And it's definitely on the bucket list, something that I'm, I'm thinking about and formulating a few plans. A couple of day trip to Scotland and wild camp on the summit of Sullivan. So that's 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 my one. Awesome. Yeah. I am um, pretty much I'm happy to camp anywhere that is an adventure from the start. I'm not I'm more about the adventure rather than the camping spot. Yeah. Just you know, getting you, out. Yeah, I just prefer to do something a bit more extreme so you know you get all these different edges and um arets to sort of you know get yourself down and i love all that so i'm happy going anywhere really but scotland's always awesome i love scotland um i need to get to wales do a few more there definitely i've not really camped in wales i don't think no mate we'll have to go i've got yeah, a yeah. few few good spots there and a bit of a base there so we'll have to set a date for the future on that cool get something planned no we'll Snow do it Anyway, I think you're cold. I'm going to get warmer gloves, get I'm, the drone up. I'm nearly out of beer, so um, yeah. <laughs> I'll get the other beer out, get the drone out, and we'll capture a little bit of this. Yeah, let's show you some of uh, what's going on. Thanks very much for all your questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, definitely. Um, you know, it's nice to be interactive with you guys, that's the thing. And um, as a channel, uh, Chris is already quite along that route anyway you're quite interactive i'd say but um i this is sort of thing that i want to do so well i've noticed you do the same i think and you, well you'll probably do it for as long as you can reply to it i do, i always think if people take time out of their busy schedules to to comment on the videos i know notice from looking at yours mate you reply to everyone and i that's something i replied to pretty much every single comment going positive and negative um yeah that's the thing i i sort of want to i want to be approachable as a yeah. person you know and not just sit up high and you know not not be part of that community you know that's what it's all about so you just know, there's... two blokes that love the outdoors yeah passionate about it and that's it well exactly exactly and there's no point you know as you say people take the time and effort to do that so i'm gonna try my best to reply yeah. where i can and there's gonna be a point where you know, your channel grows to the point where you, you can't do that, I guess. But I'll still answer what I can. Um, yeah, if I do this full time, I'm, I want to be everyone's best friend and just try and make sure that, you know, I'm keeping that keeping community alive and thriving. So, yes. Right, warmer gloves. Other cheers. beer. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for that.
there we go we've just got the moon the moon on one side and the sun setting on the other you can't beat this can you really no. look at that what a night that is spectacular I'm ready start you ready this is uh, Chris keeping warm and I'm keeping dog warm. You ready? Pitch it. Is this what you do normally? This is Bear Grylls technique, mate. Is it? Centrifugal force. Push the blood to your extremities. And SAS technique, that. Yeah, and he says uh, Bear Grylls, but I think Bear Grylls will be in a hotel by now, won't he? Yeah, it's a helicopter would have picked him up. <laughs> exactly that, so. <laughs> Yeah, we're twice as hardcore as that. That. Yeah. Oops, I can't. <laughs> I can't. That's not going. What a fantastic night. So we've had a couple of beers and uh, we're just sort of going to open another one. But I mean, the light now just like pouring down onto us. And there's, the sun's gone down, but you've just got this hue coming over from the hilltop over there which is just absolutely beautiful and strangely on this side we've got the moon as well so it's a lovely place to be so yeah very happy at this minute <sighs> i'm not promoting beer but um it's nice to have a beer and just relax into this sort of environment definitely chris is just uh, playing fetch with the dog but look at that Look at that, eh? You just can't beat it. It's amazing. You ready, Blue? Ready. Fetch it. Come on, fetch it. Good boy. Feel a little merry now to be fair just watch the um the sort of mist just flow through this valley in front of us and it's just been fantastic and the most amazing thing was for us was that we had what we classed as a moon bow get that you get a rainbow but the moon was just sort of shining onto the uh, mist in the distance and um, actually formed a round sort of a uh, Moonbo, that's what it is. It's a Moonbo. It's a new thing. We've made it up. We were the first ones to ever see it. And um, yeah, just awesome, yeah, mate, wasn't it? I say awesome. Yeah. Just yeah. stunning to be out in this environment and being able to just be a part of it and see what Mother Nature can throw at you. Like a Moonbo. Get that. <laughs> so anyway, it's time now for us to get in, have some food, and then uh, we'll... Once we've uh, warmed up again, because it's yeah. it's pretty chill, chilly, like we'll uh, we'll have a beer and a whiskey just to top the night off, and um, then it'll be bedtime, I think. But just got to sort of show you here. It is getting a bit cold. Look at this. A bit of ice forming. There we go. So it's a chilly one, but definite. Well, it's time to make some food. I have got a chili and rice by uh, Wayfarer, is it? And uh, I'm just adding some extra rice with it just to bulk it out. I always say that, I know. Um, but we have um, we've had a, a good chat, a good bit of banter, a good laugh. Um, he's a proper sound guy, Chris, so uh, definitely check his channel out. Um, and anyway, it's time for us to soak up some of this beer and uh, get some food on. So I am gonna eat this and then we have got 
another beer or two to share and Chris says he's got a little bit of whiskey as just a, a chaser for the evening which should be a nice just to finish it off but I mean so far honestly absolutely fantastic it has just been the most just relaxed and peaceful and tranquil evening ever um, and as I just was sort of waffling on about the um, moon bow that we uh, saw which I've never seen before and it was honestly fantastic so yes um, look got my fairy lights it's just proper home from home is this and um, me and Chris were both, both just saying then that there's nowhere else we'd rather be than out doing this sort of thing getting out into the wilds and the, the great outdoors and just gaining these experiences and like I'd, oh, what's the word just memories that really do make you have that sort of special feeling with inside you that uh, that with inside you <laughs> inside you that is just something that is going to last forever and a feeling that makes you just energized you know to get out and go again and see the next sort of a fantastic um moonset or sunset or whatever's going it just it's just amazing it's absolutely amazing Anyway, enough of the drunk waffle. I am going to uh, stick this pan on um, and light it with the lighter that I've misplaced with all my drunken waffle. I'm actually looking rather drunk now, Chris. Drunk, I'm trying to find something that I don't have a clue where it is and trying to look good on camera. You'll be all right. Um, yeah, yeah, let's keep that alcohol going. Right, I can't find my lighter, so luckily, this is what I always do. You double up on, on the special things that you need, the most important things, and the lighter is one of them. So, we'll get that gas flowing, and turn that on, check which way it sparks and then we'll light this gas. And there we go. Get this pan on. Get dinner made. Here he is, fed. Now we're gonna finish the watering yep. by uh, just having a final beer and a little bit of whiskey and some Jumbo, oh, cashews. honey roast, cashews. Yeah. So yes, get back on, out on these chairs and just chill out and enjoy this last glimmer of moonlight. What an epic camp, Al. Yeah, it's been awesome, mate. Absolutely awesome. Quality. Right, here we are then. Two head torches. We've got a beer and a bit of whiskey. All right. So let's get this opened up. some of this out. Well, it's just flat, doesn't it? Mm. I'll tell you what, just have my hand out for a few seconds now. Painful. Good. It is cold. <laughs> Cheers, all. There you go, mate. Nice one. Chuck that in pile down there. Leave no trace. <laughs> Do you see this on Al's videos when he's not out with me? Do you like the influence, hey? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, cheers, mate. Cheers, Al. Fantastic. What a night. It's actually quite nice, that. That's refreshing, isn't it? Yeah. I think I need it. Ice beer. Well, there we are. We have uh, had such a fantastic evening. Just sat out on our chairs, drinking some beers and just taking in the moonshine, eh? The moonshine, Exactly definitely. that. Yeah, just fantastic, honestly. Um, it's been cold, um, I think I've sold him some uh, down bottoms tonight because um, it's just one of those items that is just yeah. honestly, it's a game changer when it comes to winter camping, just having some sort of decent down bottoms to put on and obviously a down jacket, but yes, on to tomorrow, um, hopefully we're going to wake up and there's, there's a cloud inversion at the minute that we can see because the moonlight is just highlighting everything, but 
in the morning I'm hoping we're going to have just like the most fantastic um, sunrise coming up over the clouds which will be brilliant but um, yeah it's been a decent night though mate proper absolutely top draw in the great outdoors exactly that just having a beer all about. so but I'll just show you quickly look at this tent um, it's a chilly one we are down to definitely minus one or two or three but look at that just the complete all over ice everywhere so it is time to get inside brush our teeth do all that sort of game and uh, get ourselves off to sleep and then um, hopefully wake up in the morning to the most incredible sunrise anyway it's been a pleasure we'll see you tomorrow take care Morning flowers. Well, just what a morning. Look at this. I don't know if it'll show well on there or not, but such a fantastic pink sunrise. But yeah, this is uh, this is what it's about when you uh, have a night out and then just get to wake up to these sort of scenes. And if we just turn you around this way, Got the glow obviously shining on me now, but uh, here's the moon just sat there, still bright as anything. But yeah, just fantastic. A little bit of cloud sort of inversion sat down in the valley bottom here as well. Ah, yes, feel very lucky. Lucky to be able to get out and experience this sort of thing. Well, it is time to get packed up. We are going to uh, get everything away and then set off to Godale Scar and then. Have a good sort of mosey around that place, which is fantastic. I've already shown it in a couple of my videos already, but um, it's just one of them places you just, you can't help but just be in awe of. Honestly, it's just incredible the size of it, the scale of it all. So, and it's uh, Chris's first time there, so I'm sure that he'll have his uh, jaw on the floor as he walks around that corner to it. So we'll show you that soon then. I'm just packing up here and the end of my sleeping bag was touching the end of the tent last night. So it's got a bit damp but it's actually frozen onto it, you can see that. Ice formed on the end of my bag. Yes, definitely a chilly one. Just uh, packing the tent away, but I'll just show you how cold it was last night. Proper deep frost. Well, there we are, packed up, all ready to go, backpacks on, feeling the weight already, we've only done about three yards, but as usual, leave no trace, and we are going to head off to greener pastures. So we're just doing the out and back now, up to Gordale Scar, which is a lovely little walk, fairly flat, decent path. And then as soon as you uh, walk around the corner to open up Gordale Scar, it's just a fantastic place, it really is.
What do you think then, mate? Absolutely. Breathtaking. I did say. Is it awe inspiring? Incredible, isn't it? It's just Absolutely. got a feeling to it. Incredible. And it's that point, you just walk around that corner and it just hits you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like tingling spine. Chris is just down there, just taking it all in. It is just magnificent though. Magnificent. Can't beat it, can you? Unbelievable. The good thing is, there's uh, some really good handholds. So you've always got a strong point of contact with this. down So here we are at Janet's Foss, absolutely stunning place. Nice place for a little dip as well on the, a warmer day. It's a bit chilly today for it, I'd say, but yeah, what a fantastic night out we've had. You know, we've been able to see all these amazing places finishing off with this beautiful place. And uh, from here, we're gonna just uh, walk Riverside back to the car and uh, get ourselves home feeling good after the most fantastic night. It really has been amazing, so. Anyway, if you've uh, liked the video, give it a big fat thumbs up, as I always say, and um, subscribe if, if you haven't already, because there's always going to be plenty more adventures. Um, we've also got Chris here from MCM Outdoors, so make sure that you check out his channel, because he's an absolutely awesome fellow, and he always has some really, really uh, decent, solid information on wild camping, especially if you're uh, starting out as a beginner. Really, really top guy. So it's Peace been out. a pleasure, mate, Peace and um, yeah, we will be out again soon for another one. Uh, I've also got a buy me a coffee link as well, so if you're interested in just contributing a little bit towards the channel, that will be absolutely fantastic and appreciated massively. So anyway, we'll leave you with the last little section of this and we'll see you another time.